This is part one of our two-part video series on ADD, how to use ADD, and TIC to make better trade decisions. In this part one, we're going to focus on how to use ADD to make better trade decisions in SPY. We did a video recently on two essential indicators to help you make better SPY decisions. That was the title of the video and uh, we got some follow-up on our YouTube channel from people who watched it saying, hey, go into more depth, go into more detail on how to use ADD and TIC. And so I reached out to one of the younger traders, one of the junior traders on our desk, who is the best person to present on this particular topic. We're just gonna have an informal conversation. We're inside of our training room here in New York City. We've got a, a gracious guest with us as well who will be sitting in and learning. And hopefully the takeaway for everybody watching is how to use these indicators a little bit better. So Ryan, take it away. If you want to learn three real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That's going to open up the free registration page in a new window. Don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free, intensive, awesome workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. All right. Um, yeah, so we're gonna talk about reading market internals and breadth indicators. Um, for the sake of this example, they're basically the same thing. So let's start out, what are market internals? So the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell are all weighted averages of a basket of underlying stocks. This means that there's big companies like you know, the Fangs, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, that can weigh heavily on the indices price and cause them to be priced higher or lower, even if the overall market and the underlying stocks are not really showing the same level of strength and weakness. And in order to better gauge the overall health of the market, we can use these market internals or breadth indicators to help us look under the surface and see whether or not the indices weightings are overweight or underweight compared to what the majority of the stocks are doing. And this can really help us to gauge the strength of directional market moves as well. So there are certain types of market internals. For the sake of this, we're going to talk about the ADD and the NICE tick. But unlike other indicators used by traders such as RSI, moving averages, MACD, you know, whatever, those are all derivatives of price, whereas market internals are derivatives of the underlying market conditions. And the advanced decline line tracks how many stocks are currently trading above the previous day's close versus stocks that are trading below. And we could observe changes in this number over time, just like we would for the price of a stock. Uh, the NICE tick tracks how many stocks are currently trading on an uptick versus those that are trading on down ticks. Similarly, we can track moves in, movements in this as a short-term indicator. Okay, so have you played around with MACD, with RSI, with other indicators? Do you use other indicators besides ADD and TIC? So the only time I would ever try and use like RSI is to kind of make analogs between my SPY trading when I'm trading in play names to try and find areas of short-term price exhaustion. But if I'm trading SPY, I won't use anything that's a derivative of price, except for daily chart moving averages. Okay. And just to sort of set the context up for this, am I right in assuming that ADD and TIC are indicators that you're using to help inform your decision making? Correct. You are not solely making decisions on ADD and or TIC. Right. It, it is, it, they are some of the variables mm -hmm. that you're using to make trade decisions. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So basically, 
I'm using these as signals to gauge the overall strength of the market and to give me more conviction at certain key inflection areas. For me, I use market profile to build my inflection areas. Some other people use daily pivots and, and things of that nature. But for me, I use overall market structure in order to find the inflection areas. And then I look for signals in the AD or the tick to kind of lean on those zones. Yeah, and you've been doing a better job of recent picking the days that you're going to skip right. watching SPY. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the days that you're, you're going to really give it your full attention. I think when we've, we first started trading, when we first started trading here, you were trading SPY every day? Yeah, exclusively. <laughs> okay. And some people do that. Some people can do that. Obviously, there are people out there that make a lot of money trading the futures every day. And there are people out there that can trade the SPY every day. I think, that that, I think you found that that didn't work for you, mm -hmm. trading SPY every day. Mm -hmm. Am I right in, in saying that? It's, yeah, it's mostly I found other ways now to augment when the market isn't conducive for my particular style. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, are you still trading this buy every day? Yes. Most okay, of, you are. Most days. So you Especially are. now because we have an elevated yeah. VIX, so it's, it's been able for me to trade it. But I think before we started pulling back from the highs, um, I was barely trading it. Yeah. So I, mean, I am doing a better job at you know, varying my trading with the VIX being elevated. Yeah. Um, right now it works, yeah. So I am on record as saying when VIX futures gets above 15, we start to get more interested in trading right. SPY. When VIX is above 20, we trade SPY, mm -hmm. we make marketplace. Is there some, some reading that gets you interested? Is it, is it more maybe contextually where we're at in the overall market? What, are, what is what is going to keep you from trading SPY? What's going to definitely get you interested in trading SPY? Yeah, so I watch the daily chart. If we're pulling back from major levels or we look like we have the potential to break out of a multi-day balance area, that can get me very interested. On an intraday time frame, if right off the open, we immediately get above the overnight highs or the overnight lows in the S&P futures, that gets me interested. Um, if we break out of the opening range, that gets me interested. Um, if we put in lower highs or higher lows in the first hour, or if we get outside of the first hour high or first hour low, that gets me interested. So I have a, a bunch of different gauges, you know, a top-down approach. So I look at, like I said, how the daily chart is, and then I move down hourly. Are we about to break out of a balance area? Are we about to have hit a major short-term inflection area, major long-term inflection area, and then move all the way down to on a one-minute chart? Are we out of the opening range? Are we out of the overnight highs and lows and, and like that? So it's kind of, you know, regimentally going down from the top to the lows and using different indicators based off of the structure of the market to decide whether or not I want to get involved. Is it fair to say you've gotten to a, a clear picture of when you're going to trade SPY and when you're not going to trade SPY? Yeah, and it's, it also goes further to say when I'm going to size up into SPY and put a lot of risk on and when I'm just going to make you know, one, two trades a day with a fifth or half of the size that I would normally use. Okay, so it's important for us to set the context of these particular variables, these particular instruments. They're helping us inform decisions, but again, they're not the only thing that is making us get long or short, spy or our futures. Exactly. Okay. So let's dive into the technical aspects of the advanced decline line. So we can use the NICE ADD, which is obviously all the stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, or we can also use the S&P 500 ADD. Um, I prefer to use the NICE one because it's a wider gauge of the overall market. And obviously that one's going to range from negative 500 to positive 500, while the NICE is roughly negative 3,000 to positive 3,000, um, depending on how many stocks are currently trading. So the AD is very useful in cases when there's divergences from the stock index action. Um, for example, if the, stock, if the index is making new highs and the advanced decline line is not, it could, italicize could, mean that the index is being propped up by more heavily weighted stocks. So kind of like we were just talking about, this can be an effective signal that we could be potentially heading lower. And if the current market context aligns with the theme of us moving lower, there can be a powerful trade opportunity off of this AD line signal. Well, let's spend a little bit more time on that because I've heard you talk about divergences before mm -hmm. and I think you're assuming that people yeah, yeah, so. know what that is. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So, so what, what does that mean to you? So a divergence for me is any time when the underlying market is showing me something that is not being reflected in the price of the major index that I'm looking to trade. So the example that I use there is, let's say we open up on the day, SPY goes up and makes a high, pulls into VWAP, and then comes and makes another high. If on that higher high, the advanced decline line is not making a higher high, that intuitively means to me that they're not able to get as many stocks further advancing green while the index is getting higher highs. So that obviously works to the downside too, but the reason why I wanna pay so, so much attention to that is if we're trading at higher prices, but they can't get more stocks green, that's showing me that major institutions aren't stepping in in a broader way to push the overall market up and are maybe just buying tech stocks, maybe just buying an individual sector that's heavily weighted in the index and that's making the market get propped up in the overall reflection of the SPY price and that can provide an opportunity for me to get short or to get long from really good prices for a new trend that develops that expresses the overall health of the market. I brought some examples so that we can kind of see what this looks like. So I have the tick down here too. I know I haven't talked about that yet, but you know, it'll make a little more sense if you read through this PowerPoint and then go back later on. We're really just focusing on the AD line right now. So we're talking about to the downside in this example. So SPY opens up, this is a one minute chart. We develop an opening range, we make a new low, and we continue to trend down and make new lows. While we're making new lows, you can see that the AD line has a steep move down, but then gradually more and more stocks start to become green. More and more stocks start to become green, then we pull in, and when we make the low of day, you can see that there's right now less stocks below their previous day's close than there was when we were trading almost a dollar higher. So for me, when I see something like that, I'm thinking, okay, we're trading at lower prices, but there aren't more stocks that are moving lower. Institutions have to trade baskets of stocks. If you have you know, billions of dollars invested in the market, you're not just gonna put it all into the spiders, you're not just gonna put it all into one stock, you need to have a wide range of stocks that you're involved in. So if we can gauge the overall market and see that you know, the signal here is there are not more stocks, institutions aren't pushing more stocks to lows, and that could mean that we're at a short-term inflection and there might be a new counter trend that develops from this point that we're at. So the AD line is the signal. So I usually get the signal from the AD that we have the potential to see higher prices. Maybe we shouldn't be trading this low. Maybe we're coming to a point where we can turn around. And then I use my market profile to find the key inflection of where I think that zone can be. And then I use the tick, which we'll talk about later, to gauge short-term exhaustion in order to get involved for that move. So I know I just kind of went through a lot and we just introduced you to the concept of a divergence, but this is what it's gonna look like thematically. You know, we're making new lows on the day. The AD line's not making new lows. That's a divergence. That's the signal. And then from there, I use my other, you know, market reading abilities to get myself involved for a bigger picture idea that there's going to be a new trend that develops that's counter to the one that we've seen so far. What was the tick when the market was at the low right there? So I usually have, I mark out positive 600, positive 1,000, negative 600, negative 1,000. So that tick right there was underneath negative 600. And depending on the volume on the day, anywhere underneath negative 600 can be short-term exhaustion. And we'll talk about that when we get a little bit more into the tick. Um, but on a day like today, or on a day like this day, a negative 600 tick, given the volume that we are seeing, can definitely be a short-term pullback point or even the end of a trend. Often, you know, in the VIX that we're in right now, yeah. we're looking for a thousand ticks, which yeah. we talk about, and I'll get into that a little more as well. So here's another example. So this one, we have an opening range developing right here. And while we make this swing high, Again, we get that positive 400, positive 500 tick, which we'll talk about. And as we're making that lower high in the opening range, you can see that the AD line is already starting a downtrend. So we're looking at right here when we're making this high. 
And while we're making that high, the AD line is trending lower, which means that they're consistently pushing more and more stocks below their previous day's close. More and more stocks are trading down, but the spies haven't reflected that in price yet. We're still within an opening range of, you know, 20, 40 cents. So when I see something like that, again, now I'm thinking that the underlying market is much weaker than the spies are reflecting, and there's the potential for us to see lower prices and potentially have a much bigger trend on the day. So I use the tick to gauge short-term price exhaustion, look to get myself involved. We move lower, we move lower, and then we come back up to VWAP in the middle of the day, and you can see that we're still trading at much lower prices. If you look over to the last time we were trading here at 263, scan over, that's right around here, look down, there were this many stocks that were advancing versus declining, and now we're lower even though we're trading at the same price. So that's just giving me more indication that, yeah, we're most likely going to continue to roll over. We're getting extreme ticks. This will make more sense in a little bit. And you can align yourself short with the market internals to make a more powerful trade decision. So we talked about divergences, but the other aspect of the ADD is ADD extremes or trends. And these are mostly used to, instead of gauging fade opportunities, so trading against the short-term trend, these are used to get along for a much powerful overall market trend. So on the one side, we have divergences that are used to get involved for a new trend developing. And then on the other hand, we have ADD extremes and trends, which help us to be involved for a much bigger developing trend that could last for the entire day. So the way that we look for this is we look for the AD line to be sitting at extremes for its range. This can be either above 1800 to 2000 or below negative 1800 to negative 2000. As long as we're balancing within that area, it's very likely that the trend is going to continue. And if you think about that intuitively, if 2000 stocks are advancing, that means that almost every stock is green in the market and they're just going to keep continuing to buy and buy and buy and the overall weakness or the overall strength is just not going to change. So one thing to remember is oftentimes we can open up in these areas if we have a big gap up or gap down. We've seen a lot of that in the current market, you know, with overnight headline risk. You can see the market gap up or gap down to, you know, big ranges and oftentimes that will cause us to have obviously a lot of stocks advancing or declining. And we could open up, you know, above 1800 or below negative 1800. The key thing to remember is if we continue to balance in that level, it's likely that ga that gap can be a gap and go. So we gap up big and then we continue to trend all day, or we gap down big and continue to trend down all day. So that's one scenario for gauging a market trend, having the AD line sitting at these extremes. The other way will be if the AD is developing its own trend. Let's say we open up, we gap down to negative 400 issues. If from there we continue to trend up, get positive issues and continue to trend overall on the AD line, that can be indicative that they're continuing to buy and buy and buy basket stocks. More and more and more stocks are getting green and we could trend in the overall index because of the strength that they're showing continually. So both of these ways are opportunities for us to gauge the likelihood of a trend day. So here's some examples of that. So this is actually yesterday, and if you traded the spies yesterday, or you're involved in the overall market, you may have been overly bearish. There's a, a lot of sentiment about us going lower, and that set up probably one of the nicest dip and rip opportunities we've seen in a long time. And if you were aware of the AD line, and you're aware of gauging market context using the market internals, you could have been involved for that move much earlier than price would have indicated. So we come in, we make that low, we push, we make a new low, and I know it's kind of small to see, we make a new low, and then instantly we're rebidding back up and we're starting to press against VWAP. If you look at this time, the AD line has already started to completely reverse and the AD line is sitting at highs of the day, while we haven't even taken out the opening print or the highs of the day, and we're underneath VWAP. That right there is a divergence, and it's also letting you know the AD line is starting to make a really strong, really strong trend, and that can show that they're starting to buy up basket stocks before the indices have even popped. If you were aware of that 
and you were able to gauge the strength based off of experience, using this indicator often, and really understanding what it means when you have a big reversal in the AD line, that could have set you up to be involved for a trend that lasted all day. Here's another example of when the AD line is holding below negative 1800. Right off the bat, we see the AD line get absolutely crushed and they're selling, selling, selling basket of stocks. We went from being at negative 1500 issues to all of a sudden negative 1900 issues and we haven't even broken out of the opening range yet. So on a day like this, you'd be watching, 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 waiting to see how we trade at VWAP and now you're seeing there's extreme weakness in the underlying market and there's a very strong potential that we trend down and close at lows because the wide majority of stocks are trading below the previous day's close and they're staying there, which means they're staying negative, they're getting more negative. You can see that that develops into a very big trend day, we close at the lows. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.